edified and Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. I want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All of our social media community, we are so glad to welcome all of you to the service today. And I want you to know we're going to have an exciting time in the word of his grace. I also want to welcome all of our radio audience in Aquaibom State. All of you connected by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're truly glad and excited to have all of you in the service tonight. Call a friend, a family member, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community, like you've always done, let's get the word around the world. Lord, let's flood the earth with the, the fragrance of Jesus' grace. Share the video on your page here, you know, in as many as 50 to 100 pages. Let's get the word around the world. Our campuses, we're so glad to welcome all of you to the service today. We're really glad to have all of you, brothers and sisters, online in the house. Praise God. Can somebody shout a good amen? amen. Are you excited about the opportunity to learn the word tonight? We celebrate the word of God with a shout tonight, everybody. Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and your phones. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we continue in this world. Uh -uh. Glory to God. I said glory to God. We've been examining Brother Paul's revelation of identification, and we've, we've covered quite some territory. You know, we've been examining the signature of the Pauline theology in Christ. And we've done quite a bit, and we still have quite a bit to do. The book of Second Peter, chapter 3, verse number 15 and 16. Second Peter 3, 15 and 16. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom, the Sophia, taken from the word Sophizo, given unto him as written unto you. And the word Sophia is inside. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. So we began to look at how Brother Peter gave credence to the Sophia, the insight that Brother Paul had on the subject of salvation. And he acknowledged that what Brother Paul taught was hard to be understood. And that those that are unlearned and unstable, they rest with the revelation of the Pauline theology. Now, it's important to also understand that all of the apostles, they taught Christ in a very particular way, especially after the resurrection. Because if you remember, in John chapter 16, verse 12, John chapter 16, verse 12, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So Jesus said that after his resurrection, the spirit of truth will guide them into all the truth concerning the things that have been spoken of him in the Old Testament. So now we said that the disciples taught Christ in a very particular way after the resurrection. Because in Luke chapter 24, verse number 44, when Jesus rose from the dead and met those guys, the Bible says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Next verse. Then opened he their understanding, dinogio, that they might sooner me, Understanding, un, understanding, un, understand. Dinogio, understanding, that they may sooner me the scriptures. 
So he split open their understanding for the first time. The word dinogio. It means a man's understanding is open for the first time. It's like a baby coming out of the womb of a woman for the first time. He split their understanding open for the first time. And they soon me the scriptures. That is, they were now able to collate the facts of the scriptures together and make a singular message out of the scriptures. Now that was the understanding that the teaching ministry of Jesus gave to them post-resurrection. So now, because their understanding was open, you know, they could now handle the Old Testament books. So even if you have the pleasure, like I said, of being there when Jesus taught, the moment your mind is opened, you will teach how Jesus taught. You will teach the way he taught. Because your mind is now open to the, to, to, to the things that Jesus was communicating. But of course, because of the time we're in today, we're in the day of the church, you will teach with much more clarity and again by the spirit of Christ. So we began to see that there's a synergy in Brother Paul's writings and Jesus' words. Remember we said that Jesus taught from Moses, so Jesus' teaching notes were Moses' teaching notes. And Brother Paul also taught from Jesus and from Moses the Old Testament books. He taught from Jesus by way of eyewitness account. But from Moses by way of, you know, the law and the prophets. Now, if you take the words of Jesus and the words of Moses, like I said, you know, and the words of Paul, by now you should be able to see a relationship between what Jesus taught and what Paul taught. So you can now read the four Gospels like you're reading the epistles. Now, it's also important to remember, like I said yesterday, Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. The first three chapters of Genesis, that's where you will get Moses' concept or Moses' didache from his concept. So we need now to investigate a term or some terms. Are you ready? Hello, are you ready? We need to investigate a term or some term. We're going to do a bit of word study. John chapter 1 verse 1, John now putting together the things he has understood, said in the beginning, Ake was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word. Why is John now speaking like that? Because John's mind is now opened. His mind is now open. Ake. Ake was the word. The word was with God. The word Ake means in the beginning. Just like you have Bereshit in the beginning. All right? The word was God. He uses the word prose. P-R-O-S. Prose. Pay attention, please. The word was with God. So he uses the word prose. Mark that word prose. Prose is to what? A word that Jesus now uses in his priestly prayer in John chapter 17 verse 5. Please pay attention. John 17 verse number 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Let me use a poor Bible student's words, you know, to, to say what Jesus is saying here because we want to explain a term Paul uses, a term Jesus used, a term Peter also used and what it meant. So let me use a poor Bible student's words. Jesus was on the throne, came down to get his body and so he said, Pay me, put me back on the throne. So he goes back on the throne and he says, I have the glory that I had before the world was. That's a poor Bible student's way of explaining. He uses the word, please pay attention, prostone cosmos imai. Prostone cosmos imai. Three terms. Doxa. All right? Now, the word proton cosmos, cosmos imai, together they will make a meaning. Those are Greek words I just read. Because we are going to see the term used elsewhere. Pro, proto, cosmon, proto, like proton, agape, proton. Okay, so proto, cos, cosmos, cosmos, cosmon, imai. Imai is a short form. You can call it inai, 
but is a short form of emi, E-M-E-I, to exist. Then he uses the word doxa, D-O-X-A, glory. D-O-X-A, glory. Yesterday I observed some people were murdering all the Greek words that I gave on the social media when I was checking. You know, when I talked about the euphoranius, some people did hate you. It's epo, epo, ronius, E-P-O, E-P-O, not H-U, eporonius or oranius, O-R-A-N-I-O-U-S, oranius. And there are quite a number of them. I could, I, could, I could give you all of those words for free tomorrow if I have extra five minutes. I will just quickly read the words out for you so you write them down. So you don't go and write something that doesn't have any meaning anywhere. All right. So then he uses the word doxa, the word glory. All right. So protocols mona monai. Protocols mona monai. Or proston cosmos and imai and the word doxa the doxa that i had with you what is he talking about now by using the word pros p-r-o-s or cosmos from the world when it began from the world when it began to exist Put that John 17, 5 again. I want you to watch. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world began. Jesus is quoting who again here? Before the world began. Will be who? Moses. Because Moses is the Akai. A-K-E-I. He's the beginning. That's why John, knowing that, knowing that, and that prayer that Jesus prayed with his mind opened now because it's post-resurrection and he wrote the book of John after, after the effect. He now says, so, oh, in the beginning was the word and the word was the light of men. And that's the light of salvation that Moses spoke about. And Jesus is now saying, in my glory, that will be the light in the hearts of men. In my glory, that will be the light in the hearts of men. And Jesus is quoting Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3 in his prayer. Light shines in darkness, and the darkness couldn't comprehend it. Where is that? Genesis 1, 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. That light has to be in the hearts of men. So Jesus now said, glorify me with the glory I had before the world began. Now, so what will be before the world began? Okay, first of all, who is Jesus quoting from when he says before the world began? Moses. So where will Jesus be quoting from? Genesis. Paul also mentioned a lot in his writing and in his preaching with Moses. Look at Acts 13, 38. Acts 13, 38. <clears throat> Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Next verse. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. You know, oftentimes when people discredit Moses, I wonder where they were getting, they will get doctrine from because Moses is the beginning of doctrine. But I know the problem. Many people don't know the difference between Moses as a function and Moses as a person. So when they hear Moses, they just, he's a lawgiver. But when you talk about Moses, there's Moses as a function and there's Moses as a person. Moses as a person is the beginning of doctrine. Now, pay attention to this. You need to realize that most of what is taught in the words of Jesus and in the epistles were from Moses. Look at Acts 26, 22. Acts chapter 26, verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day 
witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Say no, Paul is saying there's nothing else I said other than what Moses and the prophets said. I didn't improve on them. I didn't contradict them. I only further explained what they said. Say none other things. So sometimes when you're learning, don't sound too authoritative. And don't be in a hurry to arrive at a conclusion before your teacher. Don't take what I say and conclude it when I am still saying it. You got to calm down. Very important. Because we learn precept upon precept. And as we keep learning, things keep unfolding. So that Acts 26, 22 and 23 again. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Next verse. That Christ should suffer. That's what Moses and the prophets said. That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and show, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. This is the waters of Moses. So Jesus is now praying in John 17 verse 5. John chapter 17 verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He said, which I had with you, pros cosmos menomonai, pros cosmos monai, according to Moses at the beginning. According to Moses at the beginning. Light. That's the glory of salvation. The glory I had with you before the world was. That's the glory of salvation. The glory of bringing all nations into one man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul knowing that truth, nothing will baffle you more if you are a disciple of Jesus in the four gospels, if you are one of the twelve. And if you found Paul teach exactly what Jesus taught without being one of them, you'll be so baffled, especially when he's saying exactly what Jesus said, the way Jesus said it. They had to say, look, he has this Sophia, this wisdom, because they knew that only Jesus taught this authoritatively. That's why many people believe, you know, in theological circles, that Jesus and Paul had a private Bible study. They believe that Jesus and Paul had a private Bible study. But if, you know, if such a thing ever happened, Paul will have mentioned it somewhere. So it's not true. They didn't have any private Bible study. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Now let's hear Paul. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Did you observe? Which God ordained. Before the world unto our glory. John 17, 5. John 17, 5. Put it up quickly. John chapter 17, verse number 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 7. Pay attention. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That is proston hymnoin doxa. Hymnoin. Hymnoin doxa. Look at the word proston hymnoin. He uses the word world. Hymnoin or ages. While Jesus uses cosmos, Paul uses ages, Jesus uses cosmos. They are interwoven. World, world, cosmos, ages. Just remove the word hydion and cosmos and Jesus and Paul are saying the same thing. They were both talking about his resurrection for our sins. 
Proston, Proston, P R O S T O N E, Proston, Hynion Doxa. Again, he's quoting Genesis because it's only at the Akai you can have the Proston before. Proston. Just like we have Proston. Prostone agape. God's first love. Prostone. Only in the beginning you will have the prostone. Then there's the word world. There's the word ages. There's the word events in Genesis. So you can have the prostone hynion or the prostone cosmos. Because Moses spoke about what was in the mind of God at the beginning. Then somebody says, is it before time began or when time began? Well, whether it was before time began or when time began, both ways, all we are in God. Whether before or when time began, they were all in God. Before time began, you will never know. But when time began, you will know. Are you following? Okay. You will never know whether it was before time began, the thought was, or after. But either way, it's in God. Whether before or after the world began. But before God, it has to be before time began. Because God is the Akai. God is the beginning. Without God, there will be no beginning. It can't be at the beginning. It must precede the beginning. So before the beginning began. Then when the beginning began. What was in God's mind was brought to bear. God had it in mind before the beginning began. Then when the beginning began. It came to bear. Are you in the building? Okay, very good. So watch. Ephesians 1 4. Ephesians 1 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Paul uses the same phrase differently. Again, he changes the term. Remember Paul's Sophia, his insight? Don't forget that. So, this is what Brother Paul now uses here. Pros kataboles. Pros kataboles. Let me spell kataboles for those of you making notes. K a t a b o l e s. Kataboles. Cosmos enien. Pros kataboles. Cosmos enien. Similar to Jesus, only that he now added a word kataboles. Pros kataboles. Cosmon enien. Jesus said. Prostone, something, cosmos, anien, or pros cosmon anien. He didn't, Jesus didn't use kataboles. Paul used kataboles. Never forget, Paul is an advancement, a further explanation of Christ's teachings. And it is Christ in Paul that further explain what Christ taught in the four Gospels. So why does Paul use the word kataboles? It's a new word. Is it contradictory? No, it is not contradictory. Matthew used that same word in Matthew 13, 35. Matthew chapter 13, verse 35. That it might be spoken, which was spoke, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Things kept secret from. Now this is a prophecy from Psalm 78 verse 2. Explaining how Jesus spoke. And it's very similar to John 17 5. So what's the word kataboles? What's the word kataboles? Look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, 
although the works were finished when? From the foundation of the... Did you observe all the scriptures were written is before the foundation, from the foundation? Did you observe that? Please, don't miss that. That's very key. Now, so remember, pros, kataboles, cosmos. That's before. Cosmos, genomai. Genomai. Genoma is spelled as G-I-N-O-M-A-I. -I. It means to exist. Same as imai. To exist. Genomai is the same as imai. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 enter rest. Quoted from Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. The word from there is the word apo. Apo, not pros. Apo, A-P-O. Apo, kataboles, cosmos, genomai. Apo, kataboles, cosmos, genomai. The same as Genesis chapter 2. Remember, heaven and earth is about who? Huh? About man. The works about man we are finished the works about man were finished from the foundation of the world <laughs> and this writer now takes the same word katabolis hebrews 9:26 for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now watch, 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 watch. Watch, watch, watch. Since the foundation wouldn't be right. It would be a sin tax problem. It can't be sin. Because it can be seen because it's apocataboles. He must and wants in the end of the world. So two different words. The first one is the word katabole, which is the word conception. That's the meaning of katabole. Conception. Conception. Now, conception and genesis. Are they the same? Huh? Yes. So from Genesis, it was said he will suffer. From the book of Genesis, it was said that Jesus will suffer. But he now appeared in the end of the world. He now appeared in the end of the world. The Greek word, sunetelai. Sunetelai. I spell for you. S-U-N-E Sune Telai T-E-L-E-I In the Greek, those of you that are familiar with Greek, in the Greek the word son means together. Son. S-U-N. It means together. That means joint action. Then there's the word Telai T-E-L-E-I It means to complete it. But he now appeared in the end of the world, Sunetelai, to complete it. Now, we have been talking about from the foundation of the cosmos or the aeons, events. From the foundation of the cosmos or the aeons, events. So, he now says, when all those events now come to bear, what is it for? It is that Christ will suffer. When all the events come together, what is it for? Is that the Christ will suffer. But the prophecy that he will suffer was from the foundation of the world. But the fulfillment of that suffering was at the meeting of the ages. At the meeting of the ages. Or when you synthesize all the activities together. 
really the prophecies and the events what you will see after synthesizing them together is the fulfillment of what was said before so genesis packs it the four gospel manifest it the epistles explain it genesis packs it together the four gospels manifest it the epistles explain it genesis therefore is the catabole the conception where the seed was sown genesis is where the seed was sown this is for that mass class <laughs> genesis is where the seed was sown That's where Moses, beginning at Moses, that's it. You have to begin at Moses. So it's therefore authentic, it's therefore, it therefore authenticates what theologians usually say that every doctrine must be in Genesis, in a gem form. Every doctrine. Any doctrine that you cannot find in Genesis as a seed is not Bible doctrine. Yesterday I told you that all Bible doctrine began from where? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. You must see it. It must be generated. The new creation, the new generation must also be found in Genesis. And we will see this shortly. At the end of the age, now hold on, look at me. At the end of the age is not the second coming of Christ. At the end of the age is usually the four gospels. The four gospels. Because at the end of the age was the manifestation of the incarnation. Which is the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament. And that word katabole is also used in Hebrews 11.11. 11. Look at it. Hebrews 11.11. 11. Through faith, Sarah also herself received strength to conceive katabole, to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. The word conceive seed. There is the word katabole. It's used for sowing a seed or the start of an action. That word katabole is used for sowing a seed or the start of an action. So the action to bring Christ to die for our sins. When was the seed sown? Huh? In Genesis. Look at Matthew. You can read this at home for further study. Matthew 13, 35. Matthew 25, 34. For further studies, you can read at home. But importantly now is John 17, 24. John 17, 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Hey! For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So when Jesus was praying. That prayer in John 17. He was praying the words of the prophet. Beginning at who? Moses. Every prophet in the Bible. Was explaining Moses. Every prophet. He is the foundation for doctrine. Every prophet was explaining Moses. There was no prophet that did not take something from Moses. And that also went on, you know, that, that culture went on with Jesus. So John 17, 24, 
is same thing in Genesis. John 17, 24 is the same thing in Genesis. It's the same thing in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. It's the same thing in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. It's the same thing in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. The same. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Was manifest in these last times for you. From, from, who verily was foreordained before, it will be from, which will mean the event that now came from that place, from Apo, A-P-O, pros, before the events started, Moses said it. Before the event started, Moses said it from the foundation of the world. So Moses said it from the foundation of the world before the event started. Are you following? Moses said it from pro the foundation of the world. Moses said it. Moses actually wrote about it. And Moses began to write and to link what happened in the garden to what happened after Abel. He drew the comparison down to Enoch, Noah, and he went to Abraham, a key figure, and he spent quality time on Abraham, then went to Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, then he comes to that entire Jewish nation. What a way to explain the first two chapters. Because that's how Moses explained the first two chapters. All those books till Deuteronomy, Everybody that taught in the Bible, whether prophet or apostle, including Jesus, they took their teaching from Genesis to Deuteronomy. All of them. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus. Grace and truth from where? Huh? From Moses. If you have been a good follower of the things I teach, by now you will have known what I'm saying here. Because I've told you that in other words before. That it appears like Moses taught two things. Huh? He taught what? Law. Then he taught what? He taught Christ. Don't be using grace too much. He taught Christ. Because grace is not all of Christ. Christ is bigger than grace. That's why when people say I preach grace, I tell them I'm not a grace preacher. I preach Christ. Because grace is what came out of Christ. And Christ is bigger than grace. Are you following? But we don't argue about it. People say this power city is a grace church. We don't argue. It's okay for the, pur for what? For the purpose of you know, labeling. But when it comes to the technicalities, we're really not a grace church. We're a Christ church. Our vision is to reintroduce what? In, reintroduce grace, reintroduce you to this generation. Is it getting clear? I, I said, is it getting clear? Grace is just an aspect of the work of Christ. It's not all the work of Christ. See? So grace is part of it. But that's not all that there is to it. And in this church, if you know very well, we don't just teach grace. We teach the whole counsel of God. Is that true? We teach Christ what he has done, what he's doing, and what he will do. We teach the privileges and rights, and we teach the responsibilities too. Are you following? Please, that's very important. So, grace and truth from the writings of Moses came by Jesus. Grace and truth from the writings of Moses came by Jesus, or came as Jesus. So Jesus fulfilled Moses. 
Jesus fulfilled Moses. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. Let me read 1 Peter 1 19 to 20. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Next verse. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Foreordained is the word pros. Pros the foundation of the world. Question, where was he ordained? Where did we find out that he was foreordained? In the writings of Moses. Revelation 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. Wow. Not that Jesus died before the foundation of the world. There are people who talk like that because they don't want to be taught. Jesus didn't die before the foundation of the world. And I know in this church we don't talk like that. Now observe, he says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Book of life of the Lamb. The life of is the life of the lamb. The life is the life of the lamb. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. The records of the lamb, the records that contained that the lamb will be slain was from the foundation of the world. It's not that the lamb was slain from the foundation but the records that carried the agenda that the lamb was will be slain, the records were from the foundation of the world. Because the lamb was slain at the end of the activities. Which activities? The prophecies of the prophets. At the meeting of the ages. Revelation 17 verse 8. The beast that, that thou sowest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So when he says book of life we are referring to the things said about Jesus. Book of life is referencing the things said about Jesus. Book refers to writings. Coded words. So, those writings about Jesus and his suffering for me. Those writings about Jesus and his sufferings for me. That book will refer to things said about Christ. That book. Things said about Christ, his death, and his resurrection. The moment I believe those things said about Christ, his death, and his resurrection, I am in that book. I am in his sufferings and I am in his resurrection. It's just a pictorial explanation of the prophecies and events that were predicted about Jesus. It's not that there is an exercise book where people's names are written. No, it's a figure, it's a communication. And when people don't understand, they will say every day they are, they are removing your name from the book of life. Every day they are writing it. It's a pictorial explanation of the prophecies and events that were predicted about Jesus. So Revelation 17 verse 8 again is the same thing. So you will deduce this from the prophet. God's plan for salvation is first found in the writings of who? Moses. 
But Moses records these other prophets before him. Moses recognizes Enoch. He recognizes Noah. He recognizes Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were prophets before him. He recognizes them and writes about them in Genesis. Even though they pre-existed him. Again, how do you know them? You will know these prophets by what Moses wrote. Without Moses, you will not know of Enoch. You will not know of Noah. You will not know of Abraham. You will not know of Isaac and Jacob. It is Moses that wrote and it's from Moses everybody else referenced them. Are we following? Because the Jewish people used oral tradition in communicating. So Paul, therefore, a Paul is lending credence to the wisdom. He is sharing or teaching pros te enion am I. Pros te neon am I. Then Paul writes a lot from Genesis. If Paul wrote a lot from Genesis, that means Paul's humanity is Moses' humanity. Did you get that? Paul's humanity is Moses' humanity. In Moses' humanity, there is male and female. In Moses' humanity, there is male and female. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Genesis 1, 26. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all creeping thing and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Are you still here? If you are still here, can I have a good amen? amen. So, Moses' humanity is the slam, the image of God. And the image of God in Moses' humanity is Christ. The image of God in Moses' humanity is Christ. And all of these are in the vocabulary of Moses. Because Brother Paul said in Romans chapter 1 verse 2. Look at where he got his gospel from. Romans 1 2. Which he had promised. Give me verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle. Separated unto the gospel of God. Where is the gospel of God? Next verse. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. So God promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. So when Paul picked his Adam, when Paul says that there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, he emphatically said, the man. The man. What he's saying is in Moses' theology, when you hear the man, is Christ Jesus. God and man. The man. So Jesus is the man of Moses. Man in our image. After our likeness. That's slim, which is not male nor female. The man in Genesis is not male or female because male and female are in that man. <laughs> Whereas in the physical images we all have 
male and female in the physical. But what was said in Genesis 1.26 cannot be male and female. It must be that community of men in Christ. Because in chapter 2, you don't find male and female together. You'll find a male and a female. In chapter 1, you have male and female together. But in chapter 2, they are not together. In chapter 1, is together. And that male and female together is only found in Christ. So Moses again was writing about what God planned for humanity. Neither male or female. You know that's the way Paul taught it. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Put it up for me. That's how Paul taught it. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one. The man. The man. You are all one in Christ Jesus. The man. One. Glory to God. We are all one in Christ. And that is a writing directly from Moses. So Paul will use the word man several times. He is not talking to male. He is not talking to female. He is talking to God's man. He is talking to God's image in man which is the spirit of God in man. The spirit of God in man is not male or female. The same spirit in male is the same spirit in female. There is no difference. The man. The man in Christ. Glory to God. Are the men seated here tonight? Where are the men in Christ? Can I hear some glory from the man in Christ? If you're a sister, talk to your brother and say, I'm a man in Christ. That's right. God's image. That's the man. God's spirit. That's the man. Paul will therefore use the word Adam. Well enough. So you know that he took a lot of his teaching from Moses. That's why he kept using the last man, Adam. The first man, Adam. Because he got it from Moses, his theology. For Paul to call Jesus Adam, Paul knew the Adam Moses was talking about. So Moses had two Adams. The one that is in the image of God in Genesis 1 and the one that was told to receive of the tree of life in Genesis 2. Two Adams. Two Adams, the image of God and the one that was asked to eat of the tree of life in Genesis 2. And therefore, if one is pros cosmos enian, that has to be Christ. The one before Adam has to be Christ. The Adam before Adam has to be Christ. So look at Aya, this is so beautiful. Are you following? So what God did was God brought Christ who represents male and female. Yeah? Then he brought Adam to choose Christ. Then Adam rejected Christ is the fall. That's how Moses taught it and that's how Paul taught it. Consistency of theology. Are we flowing? I said, are we flowing? So now, so he's first. He is first in the natural. Adam. Adam chapter 2 is first in the natural. That's why it's called first Adam. He is first in the natural. And Jesus is called the second or the last. Why is Jesus called second or last? Because of redemption. First Adam fell. Second Adam redeemed first Adam and became the first Adam of the new creation. You didn't get what I just did. First Adam natural fell. Jesus 
who was prophesied pros showed forth at the meeting of the ages as second Adam to redeem first Adam and become the prototokos of the new man. Are we following? Okay, now. So, Paul plays on words in Romans 5. The first man, the man, by one man. The first man, the man, by one man. By one man seen. Romans 5, 12 to 19. Where is Paul taking all that from? Genesis 1 and 2. The man through whom we have life and righteousness is Genesis 1, 26. The one that sin came into the world through is Genesis 2 and 3. Genesis 1 is the man through whom we have life and righteousness. Genesis 2 and 3 is the man that through him sin came into the world. But interestingly, do you know? Do you know? Interestingly, that the tree of life that Moses created by pictures in Genesis 2 and 3 is the man in Genesis 1. The man in Genesis 1. Moses painted him by pictures as a tree of life to the man in Genesis 2. So Moses was preaching the gospel of Christ to Adam in Genesis 2. So what Moses was saying is that Adam was giving the gospel. The gospel of life was preached to Adam. Adam rejected the gospel and in his rejection made a choice. In his rejection of the tree of life, he made a choice and the choice was death. The absence of life. God didn't kill Adam. Adam rejected God's offer and automatically the absence of God is the presence of, of darkness and death. Am I teaching God? If you're following, shout a good amen. So there is a man and there is a man. And the man in Genesis 2 ought to be the man in Genesis 1 by choice and by faith. He ought, see, if Adam in Genesis 2 had eaten the tree of life, he would have come into union with Adam in Genesis 1. So the man in Genesis 2 ought to have been the man in Genesis 1 by choice and by faith. Is it getting clear? Well, <laughs> If you are lost, speak in tongues two hours. Because I waited for us to speak in tongues 30 minutes, 30 good minutes, deliberately, before I came in to preach. It's intentional. You need more tongues to move at this milky way with me. You, 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 you know, because why did Paul pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened? Because revelation knowledge is a function of the opening of the eyes. A man whose eyes are not open is blind. Do you understand? He's blind. Pastor Prince, come, let's do a little drama. I'm almost done for tonight. So that you can chew. Close your eye, don't open it. Come here. Don't open your eyes. Come here. Pastor Prince, come here. See. Can you see the shirt he's wearing? See the shirt he's wearing. See the shirt he's wearing. See now. That's what happens to a man 
whose eyes of understanding are not enlightened and you are trying to show him scripture. Some of you here, that's what's happening to you. Because as I'm teaching, there are some of you, you have zeroed out. You're just counting the light in the building. One, two, three, four, five, six. But I'm not moved by you. One day when you wake up, you will buy the CD and you will catch up. <laughs> you see the way he's standing? That's how some of you are. See? Pros. Genomai. Kataboli. Is that somebody's name in the village? Until a man's eyes are open, everything we are saying now will sound like mysterious. Uh, uh, Papa, you, you, you just break it down. It can be downer than this. This is the downest. Did you observe that I'm even slow? I'm counting the words. How down can I be down? <laughs> but when his eyes are open, look at that shirt. Can you see that shirt? You see that shit? Why? Because his eyes are opened. So that's why, don't get angry with people that you are teaching scripture and they are not understanding. Pray for them. Their eyes are still blind. That's why it's a prayer. Did I tell you before, thank you Pastor Prince, that there's no apostle who wrote a letter and after that prayed for revelation. Only Paul. <laughs> after writing, he says, now that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know. Somebody say, know what? Is it not English is writing? No. There's more. And friends, it's going to get exciting. If you understand what I'm teaching you, you will see where we're going in a, in a short while, within the week. Can I have a good amen? amen? So Paul is taking his words from Moses' writings. In fact, the writer of Hebrews, reading from the Psalm of David in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6 to 9, said, what is man? Hebrews chapter 2, put it up. But one in a certain place testified saying, what is man? That thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou visitest him, that thou madest him a little, thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and this set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under this man in Genesis chapter 2. So we know that the man is not Genesis chapter 2 man. So because we can't see all things put under Genesis 2 man. Then we look again. Next verse. But we see Jesus. And God said let us make man in our image. And let them have dominion over. So the man in Genesis 1 is the man that all things have been put under him. And that man is the man that thou hast made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So the man Moses was talking about, is it Paul's man? Is it the same man in Hebrews? The man Christ Jesus. The mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. So that's why they kept asking, what is man? David did a lot of inquiry. What is man that thou art mindful of? What is man? Then the writer of Hebrews says, don't look too far. We see Jesus. Jesus, the man. So he now describes the man that Moses describes. David also got it from Moses. You put the man over the works of your hands and put all things under him. Then he says, however, we see not yet all things put under him. What does he do? He takes his man from Genesis 1. And he sees a man in Genesis 2 and 3. Genesis 1 is the man Christ Jesus. 
So everybody is writing from Genesis. As I close, are you blessed tonight? Paul, in his wisdom, I believe strongly that the writer of Hebrews must have been a close companion of Paul. Even the high priest said it is better for one man to perish than a nation. And he was referring to that man. The man. It's better for one man to perish than a nation. So Christ perished so that the nation will not perish. Pilate said, this is the man. This is the man. All coincidentally talking about Jesus, the man. So Jesus feels the golden question at the experts of the law. And I close with that. Are you blessed tonight? Matthew 22, 42. Matthew 22, 42. Saying, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? <laughs> they say unto him. <laughs> These are experts of the law. They, he wants to humble them some more. They say unto him, the son of David. Uh, next verse. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, Next verse. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Next verse. <laughs> if then David call him Lord, how, how is he his son? Next verse. And no man was able to answer him a word. <laughs> Neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. <laughs> Jesus used that one to tell them, shut up! And let me do the talking. You do the listening. Look at the word in spirit. How then does David in spirit? That means in the natural, he is David's son. But in heaven, he is David's Lord. Heaven refers to what again? Uh -uh. I know. There's a word I'm looking for for the purpose of what we're just teaching. Now. Spirit. David is in spirit, David in heaven, call him Lord. On earth, he, David is his father. In heaven, he is David's Lord. Man in two worlds. That got them confused. Because the humanity is the preceding person. He told them, no, there is a person in the spirit who is David's Lord. There's a person in the natural who is David's son. So he again talks about man in two worlds. Made the seed of David according to the flesh and declared the son of God with power from the resurrection from the dead. So Jesus is that man. The slam. In Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Male and female. Of Galatians 3.28. He is God in man. The icon. God in man. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 calls him the image of God. Colossians 1.15 calls him the image of the invisible God. So he becomes invisible in man. Which was the idea of God in Genesis 1.26-28. Then the writer of Hebrews, that's why I told you he must be a polite student. In Hebrews 1.3, he calls him the express image. The Greek word character. Character. Not English character. Character is C-H-A-R-A-K-T-E-R. -E character. It means self-production. It means I am producing myself. The self-producing one. 
And if you remember in the earlier series of Soteria, I think Soteria 1, I told you he is the man like God. The man like God, not the God like man. The man like God. So therefore, Paul takes his man from Genesis. The man Christ Jesus. Glory to God. So with me, Jesus is the man. I'm in him. Completing him. Therefore, if any man in, if any man were in, stand on your feet, tell your neighbor, I am the man in. Stand on your feet tonight. The express image of God. The image of the invisible God. Leborokotona. Don't you ever say neighbor? I am the man in Christ. Say it again. I am the man in Christ. Glory to God. Lift your hands. Let's begin to praise and bless him and worship him tonight. Lebro zakala da babra gadomba rokotona kala. Iga bado gabo jekele ni mana koto loboro kota na kali na mamambro na bembere keti na kelia egele de bobro godobo zekele de brana kakali de babra rekoto balata bambre gede mari kata na kalia egebo jekele de babra gada baraka to menge alaboro koto bele de babra gada baraka to sekele na mana lift your hands and begin to bless him begin to thank him for revelation knowledge begin to thank him for the light of the world begin to thank him that the eyes of your understanding are being flooded with light. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Legoro to sokala na mamambre gede barakato ba. Egebo shekele ne mambro gadobo shekele ne baba baba rakato ba la nama. Egebo shakala na mambra gada. Kasata leke de poha. E kata leke shoto banda kasati abo. I leke sita la kashata poha. E liata poko zoko banda kasi adapo. He le kashate alaha. He kalaba kashata dabam. He ko pata kale kashata bam. He moto ko sente le kashata boa. He kala kashata babam. Begin to thank God. He le kashata baba. We are in the base of two walls. He le kashata baha. He bo loko banta kashata boa. He le kata kashoto baha. He le kada kashata baba baha. He le keshete bebe bebe. He ben le kazata. He cassette a boha ye kala. He copali a cashot of boa. He zet a lent a boda cashadabo. He can lek a zata de boha. He zet a le de boha. He can lak a shatabo. He pen de kezete le cado. He co roca shata da baba. He can lek a zete a la boha. He can lek a shataboa. He po loco zata da ba. He kezete de beha. He lek a shata da baba. Men de kesiana cashadaba. Mele keshe de boha, he le kasha da boha le, he le kasha da boha. But ye beloved, I reke shata da baba, he le keshe da baba, he kezete da baba. Make it the pearl of your most holy feather, he reke shata baba, he keshe de boha, he le da kasha da baba. Pray him more in the Holy Ghost, he reke kasha da baba, he zete ke le kada boha, him pearl le keshe de boha, he rope up da kasha ta, he reke. He kezete baba, he kezete bebe beha, he roko banda kasa da baba, he zoko banda kasa da, he leke zeta baka shete ya, he leka banda kasa ta da baba, he roko banda kasa ta, he kala kasha da baba, he le da baba baba, he reka shata da boha, he rise like an edifice, higher and higher, he reke shada baba, praying in the Holy Ghost, he reka shata baba, he manda kasa ta boha, he leka Santa da boho, he roko banda da boha, he roko banda deha, he zete ke le da boha, he ko banda kazete, he reka da boka zete da boho, he ko banda kazete, he ko banda kazete ya da boho, he ke zele ke da boha, he reka da boka zete deha, he leke shete beha, he reke de boha, 